We have three in total. Um, we are going to start with uh, Sister Nakia. She has an announcement. Um, Pastor Didi has an announcement. And then uh, uh, Elder Barry. Elder Barry and Pastor Didi. They have an announcement. And then I'll come with a final announcement. So in that order, we'll have Sister Nakia, uh, Pastor Didi, Elder Barry, and then I will come with the final. I'm just going to keep this with me and security. Um, I'm smothered in love this morning. Press play and camouflage. Who said that? 
and camouflage. It was great. It was great. That really blessed us, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Um, our last announcement is coming from Women's Ministry. So on the 15th, we have Marriage Ministry. On the 16th, we have our Women's Ministry. And we've been studying the comparison trap and how, as women, we tend to compare ourselves to each other. But we need to know that we all are unique and we all are gifted and gifts in different ways to the body of Christ. And so there's no need for us to compare each other. So we first studied, we looked at Ur, the land of Ur, where we think you're prettier, she's nicer, she's skinnier, she has more money, Ur, right? <laughs> Those ways that we compare ourselves. And then we looked at why we should not look around at each other, but we really should look up, right? We should look up to God, the one that created us for our affirmation, right? And then this week, on Saturday, we're going to study two bags full. What are you coming to God with two bags full of? Amen? What are you coming with two bags full of? And how do we relinquish that over to God? So that's going to be our study time, our discussion time, on Saturday at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. We got to start at... We, we really, really got to start at 10 a.m. this Sunday. Because my baby got a championship game at noon. So I got to make it to. So we really, we, you you hear me? Yes. 10, 10 a.m. Yes. Don't hide, Sister Brianna, 10 a.m. <laughs> you and Sister BB, come on out. I, I love being with you guys. So 10 a.m. we're going to start, amen? Amen. And then I'm going to turn it over to Overseer, who is going to introduce our speaker. <laughs> Please stand as Overseer Ooh. Shannon comes. Amen. Amen. Please stand as Overseer Shannon comes. Amen. Amen. God, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. You can have your seats. Amen. Um, I'm so excited about today. I had one of those. You might ever had a first day, that first day of school dream. Or that first day at a new job where you show up and let's just say you're unprepared. Anybody know anything about that dream? That like, so I got here early today. I was like, I just need to make sure we're ready, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready. Because I was so excited about not only the word of God, but the woman of God and the relationship that she shares with me and with this house. I'm so grateful to God. She's still on her way coming from a, another conference, I believe. I'm so grateful to God for our bishop, Bishop Loretta Smith Johnson. Amen. Now, some of you who are newer to new and newer, newer to do a living way, um, maybe wondering like, why have they been so excited? They've been sending out any text messages and posting stuff and make, say, make sure you're there on Sunday. You gonna know in just a little while. I thank God so much for Bishop Johnson for the blessing that she is to my life, the blessing again that she is to this church, the blessing that she is in the body of Christ. God has given me the opportunity to know her beyond the pulpit, amen. amen. And it's easy for people to perform well. Yeah for the length of a sermon. Let me just say it right. that way. Amen. <laughs> but when you have the opportunity to see how people move through life, it gives their preaching even more credibility. and You are even more amazed at how God uses them. So I thank God for what he will speak to us today. Amen. I thank God for what he will speak to us. I thank God for her husband, Pastor Alexis Johnson. Amen. <laughs> administrator, but when it comes to my personal administration, my life is ragged. Amen. But Pastor Alexis holds me accountable. Yeah. 
He holds me accountable for not being raggedy administratively in my business, not being raggedy with my taxes, just not being raggedy. And I thank God so much because he has a way that is firm. Pastor has a way that is firm, but it's consistent. He, he going to let you know, all right, daughter, you, you going to feel loved the whole time, but you going to know he's really saying, I need to get it together. So I thank God, amen, for the man of God that you are and the way that you bring such stability and such fathership. Is that a word? Fathership? Fathership in the kingdom of God. We love you and we appreciate you, Pastor Alexis. Amen. Amen. So we're going to receive, amen. Y'all look. See all these niggas? Y'all look. Y'all right, right. look cute, and y'all. <laughs> look, I see one over there. I see a white one. I see some gray ones. I see some green ones. I, all right, I see some medallions. I see. <laughs> okay. I think we might be extra excited about praise and worship today. Hallelujah. I think we we're not gonna go into a lot, but we want you to. Faithfulness, your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. 
name of Jesus. This is lunching season, yes? And so many times we get mixed up with where things belong and where things should be placed. But once again, all over again, God, remind us that you alone are at the center. You alone, oh God. You keep everything in orbit. You keep everything in its place. If not for you, we would not know Christ right now. But we thank you, God, that by your hand and by your word, we exist today. Hallelujah. By your loving kindness, we're drawn to you. Not because we're so wonderful and we know better than somebody else. But God, it's you. 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 We need you. We need you. We need you. We need you. We want you. We want to tell everybody about you. 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 God. You. God. Hallelujah. So, Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. Every knee will bow and every tongue shall come. 
I thank God for my husband. Amen. Hallelujah. Alexis Johnson. I thank God for all the others, deacons and members and people that have come to be with us from Shekinah. I certainly want to thank God for Minister Reggie Williams and his lovely wife. Amen. Mr. Natasha. I thank God for you all and for everybody that has come. This is the day that the Lord has made. I like that little baby. I was. Hallelujah. You know I love babies. Look at that baby. Y'all got lots of babies here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the baby church. <laughs> I don't want to start. And, uh, I thank God. I thank God. I love you, sweetie. I love you. I love you. I love you. And look at this little girl. Oh, baby. We love you all. So, the grace of God be with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Hallelujah. He made you, Fred, and he made the day. Yes. So the constant between you and the day is God. He's the constant. The day, the day is crazy, and sometimes you get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a constant between you and the day, yes, and it is God. Yeah, yeah. And He's faithful. Yeah. And He's merciful. Yeah. And He does not change. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. I have a constant. In the midst of all the craziness, and is, is there anybody? Yeah. I'm constant amidst, amidst the complication. Anybody? That, that it's comp, there's some stuff that's complicated. But I also have a constant in the midst of the joy. And I have a constant in the midst of the peace that I'm able to have in the midst of the complication. So for that constant, I give God praise. Come on, let's just give God praise. Whatever way you want to do it. to realize your purpose. And it's important to realize that God does not want you to be stagnant. That God does not want you to stay in the same place. But God wants to move you from glory to glory to glory. And that's what he's doing to my wife. God is uh, pushing her to the global scene. Hallelujah. The, 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 the planet Earth needs someone strategic the planet Earth needs someone who understands the capacity of God, who understands what God wants to do, and that's what God is doing in her. And, 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 and what's the, as God is pushing her forward, after God pushed her forward and pushed her forward, she's going to bring a tremendous amount of people with her. Amen. And as God elevates her, you also are going to be elevated, Amen. and New and Living Way is going to be impacted in a way that you have never been impacted before, and you will see that as God begins to push her forward. And as he pushes her forward, you are also going to be pushed forward with him. So Bishop, I just thank you. I thank God for what he's doing in your life. Amen. I paid him to do that. <laughs> I paid him well. I paid him well. Amen. So you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God is so good. His mercy endures forever. Um, there are a couple of things that's just on my heart and in my spirit. Um, uh, one of the things is I know you all understand all of that because you're in an atmosphere that is led by a woman that understands capacity herself. Um, I said, I said, you're in a, you're in the presence and under the leadership of somebody that is not um, stagnant. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You better be, yeah. You, you, you better be grateful. 
is that you have a woman that is leading you that will always step forward. Yeah. Yeah. And will always yeah. find a new way to express her love for God in her life, which pulls you. Yeah. How many of you yeah. in this room would never be where you are if it were not for the leadership of overseers shining in yeah. How many of you? And see, you've got to understand that that is not, that's not, it's not always um, normal. There, there are many people who are at the head of churches and organizations and they're leaders, but they're afraid to step forward, which keeps all the people behind them stagnant. And I think that they're going to have to pay for that. They're going to have to pay for it. Because God's, God's desire is not for us to be stagnant. Amen. But for us to go forward, I need somebody to just step forward. I just need you to step forward. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I need you to step forward. And when you get used to being in that place, step again. Wow. And when you get used to being in that place, step again. your wife's hand, your wife grabbed your daughter's hand, and you all step forward together. Yeah. 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 Cause Jack and Jill went up the hill yeah. to fetch a pail of water. Yeah. Something happened and Jack fell down. And guess what happened? Jill, Jill came. Jill came. <laughs> Jack and Jill. <laughs> Oh, 
They should have asked me. <laughs> because there is a power that can put your life back together. I don't know, I guess they didn't know. I guess that they had never met me. And they had never met you. Because our lives are together today because of the power of our God. Is there anybody in here that would give them glory? Give them honor. I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna talk to you today about something that's been on my heart and been on my mind. And I, I declare unto you that I don't have a nice story to tell you. I don't have, that was my story, my story. <laughs> I don't have a nice story to tell you. I don't have like a well-crafted sermon. I'm just, I'm in this place now where I just wanna tell you what the word says. What, what God said to me about the word, is that, is that okay with you? Are you ready to receive that? If you came for a really nice crafted sermon, come next week. Amen. Amen. But I want to read this scripture. Um, with, I want you to read it with me. I want to read together. And then I want to go over to another passage of scripture that might help us understand what I think God is saying. If you would stand in your feet, I'd appreciate it. Second Peter 1. Um, and we're going to start at 1. And we're going to go down to about... Uh, nine. Amen? Second Peter. Can I, I'm just going to read for a little while. Uh, Simeon Peter, uh, a servant, I'm reading from the ESP, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours. Mm. And that's something. By the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, may God, may grace, I'm, I'm sorry, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. For his divine power has granted unto us, to us all, excuse me. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through him, watch this you all, so that through him you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort, King James says be diligent, to supplement, King James says add, mm. your faith with virtue, yes. and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with, with self-control, 
and self-control, with steadfastness, and steadfastness, with godliness, and godliness, with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. Mm. For if these qualities are yours, and are what? Increasing. Increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Mm -hmm. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and your election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fail. Ooh. Is that kind of clear? Yeah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You can be seated. And I'll, I'll, we'll go to the, to the other passage a little bit later. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are your people gathered in your house. We need to hear a word from you. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, the word that has been, I don't want to say plaguing, the word that's been just bothering me. <laughs> Ever had a word bother you? Just stalking you. <laughs> the word has been capacity. Because the issue is that we, one of the issues that we as, 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 as believers uh, one of the things we do very frequently, and one of the things that is at the base of the culture of our faith and the culture of our um, understanding of who God is, is that we can ask God for anything. Okay? We can ask God for anything, and we expect God to do whatever we ask him for. But one of the things that the Lord has been speaking to me about is not only asking for something, but being able to ask for the ability to receive what he's given. According to the word, the word says that his divine power has already given us everything we need. Look at somebody and say, I've already been given everything I need. I already had it. I already had it. Now, do you really believe that? I already have, according to the word, the same word that tells you that Jesus died for you, the same word that tells you that he rose for you, the same word that tells you he's blessing you, the same word that tells you he loves you, tells you that he's already given you everything you need. Amen. Well, then why is it that it seems that we have a laundry list of needs? Why is it that, come on, y'all, come on, don't go on. You understand what I'm saying? That we've got some needs, we got some things we want, and we've got some things that we can't live without that we're asking God for. And one of the things that the, 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 the Holy Spirit has been just digging into my spirit with is that I should stop all the time asking for things. Right, right. Because if He's giving me or if He has given, then why am I asking for what I've been given? Is that making sense? Yeah. His divine power has given me. So if he has given me, the issue is that I must not be able to receive it. Because if he's already given it to me, the only reason why I wouldn't receive it is because I don't, I don't, I don't have the capacity yeah. to receive what he's already given. And if I do, I have the capacity to receive it. Do I have the ca capacity to retain it? So we come to church, and we have a wonderful time in the Lord. The power of God hits us. We are, we are encouraged. We are ignited. We are inspired. Everything is great. But because we have issues with retaining, when we walk out of here, we walk right back into the same situations, unable to retain what we received in church in order to implement it in another environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. So you, you were feeling great in church. You, you felt the power of God. You shouted, you praised God, you sang, you did everything, and then you walk right back into a situation that does not encourage you to do so. 
there was a woman that had um, uh, a hemorrhage. She was hemorrhaging for 12 years. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you all know that, that story, but there, there was a woman, she was hemorrhaging for 12 long years. And she had to live by the rules of the culture that she was in. Those rules disallowed her from going out into public because as she was a hemorrhaging woman, the blood that was, she was considered unclean. And so she couldn't go out. Can you imagine 12 years of being locked up in your house? Mm -hmm. and, and, and she, she watch this though, she, the, the blood was flowing out of her, but she never ran out of blood. The blood was flowing for 12 years, but she never, why? Because his divine power yes. was giving her everything she needed. The problem was in her ability to retain it. She received it, but she couldn't retain it. How many of us have received blessing upon blessing, but we look around and it's not there anymore? Hey, come on here. What, what happened? What happened? So we can't, and I believe that that's why we keep coming back to God, because we know that he is a supplier of all of our needs. Yeah, yeah. But I hear God say, God, the, to me, to me, maybe he's just talking to me, just maybe it's me, but I want you to learn how to receive and retain, yeah. because I want grace and peace to be multiplied unto you. Pastor Didi, this is a math issue. <laughs> this is a, I don't only want it, want you to have it, but I want it to be multiplied. Yes. Somebody say increase. increase. God desires to increase his divine nature in us. And because of that, we can't be settled and satisfied. That's why I had you step forward. That yeah, we can't be satisfied with where we step, where we are. Yeah. There's more. I don't care how great you are. I don't care how wonderful you are. I don't care how great the houses that you live in, or the car that you drive, or the job that you have, or whatever it is that makes you think of that you're great. The talent that you have the ability that you have, the anointing that you have, there is more. Grace and peace be multiplied. Do you know what peace means? Do you know what it is? One of the ancillary definitions of peace is not the, 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 uh, the uh, not having what you need, but it is the presence of all things necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Are y'all getting this? So, 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 um, God says through Peter to the people of God, grace and peace be saved. And I told you all that this was a this was a math lesson, really. Because after the multiplication, in order to get the multiplication, he tells us in the third verse, to your faith add. How many of y'all know that, that adding, hallelujah, adding is the foundation of multiplication? So if you want to multiply, you got to add. It's just a fast way. So I hear God saying, I want to quickly get you to another place by you adding. I've done what I'm supposed to do. Now you're going to change, hallelujah, the rate of your progress, hallelujah, through you adding. Tell somebody, add. Add, add virtue. Add virtue. Add virtue. Hallelujah. Add knowledge. Add, knowledge. add self control. Add Come on, y'all. Add brotherly kindness. Add. Look, don't, 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 don't just be, don't just have faith. But you gotta add brotherly kindness in order for peace to be multiplied in your life. There's some work that you have to do. And is anybody here with me? And then he said.
Ask you last. Yeah. And 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 they used, you know, we used to dance hard in our church. I mean, dance hard. And and somebody used to say, I, I don't know who it was, I think one of the old mothers, used to say that that when you dance, you you stop the head of the devil. Because yeah. he's under your feet. So you don't dance because you're happy. You dance because you got power over the devil. So some folk just some folk just dance because it was the way it was the culture of the church. And so every time the music started. And then some people had like a real fancy dance. <laughs> but the issue, the issue was we have to do whatever it takes to last. Yeah. Hallelujah. Whatever it takes to retain what God is doing in your life, that is what he asks you to be concerned about. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because that's how your capacity is increased. I need your mind. I need your imagination for a little bit. You know those little cups that you put in the bathroom dispenser? The little paper cups? They're like, they hold two ounces? Yeah? Got them? You know, got that in your mind? I don't care how many flowers and how beautiful that cup is, it can only hold two ounces. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. It can only hold two ounces. Apparently, somebody believed that you only needed two ounces in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they make bathroom cups two ounces. But if you go and buy a party cup, you know, yeah, you can get it up to 16 ounces. Those big old cups, you know, they're red, and now they're blue and purple, and they're beautiful lavender and <laughs> turquoise. They hold a greater amount. And no matter how much you want, hallelujah, yeah. to use that, two, that little two-ounce cup, when you fill up the 16-ounce cup, you cannot transfer the 16 ounce cup mm. into the two ounce cup yeah. because their two ounce cup only has a certain capacity. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have a whole gallon of soda, it's going to take time after time after time to fill up your 16 ounce cup. Mm. Amen? Amen? What am I talking about? I want you to understand that capacity, capacity of a thing is set. And that's why it's so hard for us to understand that God wants more for us. Because in our families, we were told what we were going to be. We followed what our parents did or our grandparents did. And for most of us, when we wanted something greater, if we didn't have parents that pushed us, we were stifled and stymied in the place where we want, even though we wanted more. I'm, is there anybody in here that wants more, that wants to go to a greater place, that wants some more power, wants some more strength, wants some more understanding? I want you to know that today, God has called for an increase that you have to want. Now, let me tell you something. The ability, uh, sorry, the capacity to receive, the capacity to receive is a gift. His divine power has given us everything we need. And the capacity to receive it, eyes have not seen, and ears have not heard, nor hath it entered into the hearts of your countrymen what God has prepared for you. But it has been revealed what? By the Spirit. It is through the Spirit that we gain the capacity to receive. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, and I want you to know, say, say that with me. The capacity to receive is a gift. Now, the ability to receive is a skill. Look at somebody and say, the ability to receive is a skill. Proven by 2 Peter, he said, in order to do these things, you have to do what? You got to add. Lord, teach me how to add virtue to my life. Teach me how to add knowledge to my life, to the way I live. Teach me, oh God. Okay? I don't have it naturally. I got to be, what? Taught. And I got to be diligent to learn these things. Because the test will come. 
the test will come. The third thing, the third way we're going to look at this is that the, uh, I'm sorry, the ability, it's a gift, the ability, the, the willingness, the willingness to receive is what? A choice. So you may have a gift, you may have a skill, but if you don't choose to use it, you won't be able to receive it. His divine power, I'm saying it again, has given us everything we need that pertains to life and godliness. Now, if you want death and you want unfruitfulness and, 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 and to be, you know, creaky, <laughs> you know, we weren't allowed to call fools or foolish or crazy. Creaky. Creaky. <laughs> you want to live like that? You have to do that on your own. But his divine power has given you the ability to receive and retain, yeah. hallelujah, his divine nature. Yes. So that his divine nature becomes alive in you and you're able to do what he's called you to do in the earth realm, which means and requires and is, 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 is uh, uh, known by movement. Yes. Yeah. Movement in the right directions. Direction. Um, in, in this last class that I had, uh, I uh, was studying the theories of social change. And one of the theories of social change is the cycle theory. Cycle theory. And, and anybody know what I'm talking about? I know y'all smart folks here. <laughs> the, the, but I know we all, for me, if you don't use it, you could have learned it if you don't use it. You learned it. Um, but, 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 but it is the, the, the idea that life, all of life goes in one direction. Hallelujah. And when it gets to a certain point, then it stops and it dies. Everything, everything has, a, has a life expectancy and, a life, and an endure, a, a duration of life. And when it dies over here, then something else begins over here. So there's always a cycle. Let me, let me share it with you like this. When my, when my grandmother, my maternal grandmother died, she died on June 21st, 1968. At the same time, my sister gave birth to my nephew at June 20, on June 21st, 1968. She was in Milwaukee at 6.22. My sister was in Virginia at 7.22. And at 7.22, my, my sister gave birth. At 6.22, my grandmother died. <coughs> now you can say, oh, you know, that's, that's, don't be superstitious. I'm not. I'm just telling you what happened. <laughs> but I also know that that was a demonstration of the fact that something dies and something else is born. Yeah, yeah. And, and this social theorist is saying that, that, that that's what happens in all of life. Everything that's alive will die at one point. But it doesn't die without releasing the ability for something else to come in. Yeah. How, are are y'all hearing me? So when we look at life that way and we look at how life is changing and how, what God wants for us, he says, I, 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 I believe that, that there are cycles in our lives. How many of us find that we are different from we, what we used to be 10 years ago? Amen. Come on, I hope so. Amen. But if you're not, <laughs> then you're in trouble, okay? The part that we want to understand and that I keep hearing is that Part of what we go through, the problems that we go through, all of that stuff is based, is not based, is an opportunity for us to increase capacity. Yeah. Stop worrying about, God's going to bring you through. God's going to make a way out of nowhere. Hasn't he done it? God has shown you why you had to go through what you went through, whether it was positive or negative, and it will not last forever. But if you understand that you're going through it, increase your capacity so that 
life would be increased in you. Hallelujah. Opportunity would be increased and you would be able to do what? To, to take off the blinders. Yeah. And be able now not only to bless, you all will only be blessed, but you'll bless somebody else. Because you can tell them, look, you're going to make mistakes, but don't make my mistakes. Make your own mistakes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because that's how your capacity will be increased. You have to ask questions so that your capacity can increase. You got to, listen, I was telling you about the woman, the 12, with the 12 um, years of, of, of bleeding. You, you know what happened? She got healed. Somebody needs to shout out. Wow. The woman was healed from 12 long years of bleeding. Can you imagine what she looked like? She must have been very pale. She must have been very weak. Her fingernails and toenails must have been very fragile and, and, and uh, what do you call it? Uh, brittle. brittle. Okay? There was not much. The woman was, the word says that she crawled. Oh, God. She, she crawled on the bottom to get to some, to get to, to Jesus. But she made a what? A decision that she was going to change the situation of her life. I need somebody in here to say, I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to make a decision. Whatever it takes for me to be able to stop the flow out of my life of what God is giving me, I'm going to do it. Whatever it takes to, to change my ability to receive what I know God does. So what happened was she heard, she heard, she must have been doing some studying or something while she was in the house for 12 years because when she heard about Jesus, she, she made a decision that I'm going to go forward. I am going to get out of this house. I am going to defy what everybody else says that I have to do. I'm going to do what God is calling, what I sense in my spirit. I'm going to go where I know I can get, have a change. Yeah. I need somebody to say, I know. you got to get out of where you were. You got, some of us got to get out of where we are. Right now. And it may be a good place. She may have lived in a beautiful house, but she had to get out. Are y'all hearing me? Because there's no capacity and growth and retention, uh, I'm sorry, reception and retention inside that place. Hallelujah. And so you need to go out. You need to get out. Do you know how she got healed? She went out and did what they told her she couldn't do. They told her not to do it. And for 12 years, she believed that she couldn't do it. But something happened. Adjust your crown. It was always God's will for her to be healed. It was always God's will for her to retain that blood. That's why he kept giving it to her. Hallelujah. But she has to adjust your crown. Come on, y'all, adjust your crown. Fix the way you think about yourself. Fix it. Come on, fix the way you think about things. Hallelujah. And know that thank you for the few of you that adjusted your crown. Adjust your crown. Yeah, that's what I want you to do. I, that, that's just a sign. I know you can do it without a sign. I know. But it helps to see something visual. Are you hearing me? Last thing I want to tell you. Hallelujah. There was a woman over in 2 Kings 4. And uh, this was the passage of scripture that I want us to look at. But you don't have to look at it. I'm just going to tell you. The, and she was over in 2 Kings 4. And uh, she, she was in a pro She had a problem. She had a problem. The problem was akin to what we read in 2 Kings. Because her problem was that she was blind. She couldn't see. She wasn't physically blind. But she was what? Spiritually, emotionally, she was, she was, she didn't know what to do. Okay, but she went to the, the, the prophet, and she said to the prophet, "I got a problem. Um, my, 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 my husband is dead. I can't afford. I, I don't know. I can't pay my creditors. My creditors are coming to me, and now they said to me, if I don't have the money, they're gonna take my sons and put them in slavery to pay my, my, uh, my bills." I don't, want to, I don't want my sons to go into this. How many, anybody been in a situation that was problematic like that? Like you couldn't do anything about it? Okay, you, you, you felt helpless, you felt hopeless. You knew that your decision was going to affect somebody else's life in a negative way. Come, come on, yo. Are you, you hear what I'm saying? So she goes to, and, and Elisha, the prophet, says to her, uh, what do you have? 
So he's he's removing or he's shifting her thought yes. from an impending situation mm -hmm. to a present situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, what do you have? He's shifting her thought from her fear of what will happen to what is presently a situation that she'll be able to work with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody in here. I'm talking to somebody in here. And so she says, he says, she says, all I have is a little bit of oil. I'm gonna make some cakes, hallelujah, for me and my and my and my sons. And that's all we got. That's it. How many feel like they only have a little bit to take care of your present situation? It's okay. Please tell the truth. You don't think that you have enough to deal with what you need, whether it's enough strength, enough peace, enough wisdom, enough knowledge, enough money, whatever. Okay, I don't sell him enough. So Elisha gives her a way to multiply and to increase. He gives her a, a way to open up so that her capacity is increased. Okay, he, he says, I want you now, because his divine power has given her everything that she needs that pertains to life and godliness. It's already been released unto her, but now she's got to know how to use it. She's got to know how to receive it. So you know what he tells her? He tells her to get all the vessels that she has and bring them and start pouring the oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she said, oh, I only have a few vessels. He says, go borrow them. Ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, go borrow some vessels and go borrow a few. Get out there and get all the vessels you can get. If you don't have right now the strength to pray, go borrow a, a prayer warrior. If you don't have enough strength, hallelujah, to believe, let somebody speak it in their, in, in their faith so they can get in your ear. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Know somebody. You know somebody that, that believes God like you can't right now. Hallelujah. You need to let, let them lay hands on you and declare healing in your body. Let somebody pray for you. Let somebody help you with your finances. Let somebody give you some strength. Let get in the company. Hallelujah. My mother used to tell me, get in the company of those that are where you want to be. Yeah. And when you get there, shut your mouth. Yeah. And listen. So we got to learn to borrow. I was talking to somebody the other week who was uh, doing a very hard test, and, and it was, uh, what was it, the, the National Association of Sports Medicine mm -hmm. test. I understand that it's a very uh, grueling test. And, and, and the person said that they didn't understand it because they, they didn't have no background in all of this. And, and the person said that they borrowed the wisdom of the doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, and they borrow the wisdom of an administrator. And they borrow whatever wisdom they need, they need it. And then guess what? They pass the test on the first go round. And most people don't pass the test on the first go round. Okay, I know we gotta go. So, 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 so if you don't have um, a whole lot, go borrow. Go borrow. Doesn't mean that you're taking advantage of anybody, it's just that you're borrowing. Now, I will say, be careful borrowing money. <laughs> be very careful borrowing money. Because if you borrow money from the wrong person, it could be detrimental. <laughs> not only to you, uh, not only to them, but to you. You don't want to get stuck owing more money than you're able to pay. <laughs> so you need to borrow wisdom for, how, for who to borrow money from. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Uh, so, so, so they, they, she said to Barbara, guess what? Her sons brought all of these vessels. And she remember she said she only had a little bit of oil? When she started pouring that oil, or that oil, guess what? It didn't stop flowing. It didn't stop flowing until there were no more vessels. Yeah, 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 yeah. The issue was an increase in her capacity. 
which allowed a supernatural flow. Mm. Her, the, 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 uh, the uh, prophet said now, uh, she said that the, it stopped, the, the flow stopped. He said, he said Is it, you, you didn't have any more vessels. She said, I didn't have any more vessels, the flow stopped. And guess what he said? Now go sell the oil that you had and take care of your issue. Somebody need to give God praise. I'm telling you to gather, stop asking God for things and start asking him to increase your ability to receive and retain. Stop asking him for things. He's already given you. Yes. He's already given it to you. Yes. He said it right in front of your face. And because you only have two ounces, you can't get the whole 64. Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. This is only for people that want more. This is only for people that will believe God. This is for us that, that have faith in God. Because I don't want to be blind. And I want to escape corruption. And I want to live to the glory of God. Uh -huh. Jesus was hanging on the cross and they said, why don't you come down? But he, he understood that our capacity to live forever was locked up in him. He understood that the capacity for salvation we didn't have. Yeah. And so through faith in our salvation, guess what? We borrow it from him. I'm so glad he put himself in that position where I could borrow from him. Yeah. Somebody needs to say, increase my salvation. Increase, my salvation. increase and you feel good. That's, that's what, she was, what Peter was saying in, in verse 8. He said, add. Add to your, it's not, it's not just your faith in your salvation. It's an increasing of character that glorifies God. Yeah. That puts you in a place where now you can see what you couldn't see before. The Lord bless you. 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 With a greater capacity. God, I want to make decisions that cause my capacity, my ability to receive, for it to increase. Somebody say increase, 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 increase. Y'all got to get that in your spirit. You got to talk to yourself. You got to understand that your decisions will bring an increase. Yes, yes. Or your decisions will cause you to stay stagnant. Yes, yes. Would you take somebody by the hand and begin to speak increase in their lives? Come on. Just say one by one. Hallelujah. Two by two. Hallelujah. Just, just speak increase into their lives. Come on. Talk to them and tell them, listen, I pray that you will have the wisdom to, be, uh, to receive increase. I pray that you will have wisdom to go with an increase is, no matter where it is, that you will not be afraid, hallelujah, tomorrow, hallelujah, whatever you need in order to be where God wants you to be, ah, uh, increase, hallelujah, multiplication is a quick way, it's gaining quick, it's a quick way to add, hallelujah, grace and peace be multiplied unto you in the name of Jesus, may the power of the living God be refreshed and be in your life, that you may do what you never thought you could do before, that you may go where you never thought you could go, that you'll be able to see what you never thought you'd be able to see, you'll be able to say what you never thought you'd be able to say. Why? Because his divine nature has overtaken you, and now you are able. Don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able, he's able to receive knowledge. He wants us to receive knowledge. Knowledge is information and intimacy. Hallelujah. He wants information and intimacy to increase in us. He wants us to know more and to be uh, intimate with him. Hallelujah. 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 If that's Minister to your spirit and you want some encouragement in that, I invite you to the altar. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I invite you to the altar. If you just need to be in another atmosphere, I invite you to the altar. Hallelujah, God, we praise you. We praise you, God. We adore you, God. We magnify you, God. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to know that there's nothing that's too hard for God. There's nothing that He will withhold from you. Hallelujah. He not He will not He will not withhold from you when you live your life for Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessings of the Lord rest upon you. Don't give up on God because He won't give up on you. Keep pressing. Keep going forward. Keep borrowing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep going where what you desire in God is happening. Keep going there. Hallelujah. Keep presenting yourself a living sacrifice. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Hallelujah. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. Aren't you so glad he didn't give up on you? He keeps pulling you forward. Don't give up on God. Don't say, well, I've done what I've done on. He can't do nothing else for me. No, that's not true. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Grace and peace. Hallelujah. Be multiplied. Grace is unmerited favor. Somebody say unmerited favor. Do you know that God has planned for you to have favor that you did not even get? You ain't do nothing to get this. But grace is multiplied unto you. Favor multiplied unto you. But that second part, hallelujah. 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 Not only do, does, does God want you to have, have grace and peace, but a grace rather, He wants you to have peace, which is the presence of all things necessary. When you start praying next time, ask for the increased capacity. And watch what God will do. God bless you, peace of God.
up for making us able to receive. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lord, we declare, hallelujah, that our two outs is just to the lead. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we declare that you have given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. And we will set ourselves to receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you for the stretching, oh God, and thank you for the capacity building. Thank you for your woman servant that you sent to enlarge our territory, Lord God, to make us more capable and more able to hold what you desire to release through our lives. So we need today declaring not only are you able, but we are able in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Come on and put your hands together. Thank you, Lord.
my team and I won the fourth grade basketball championship. Yeah. Jesus. 